10 lines. So the most we can do to honor such a person is, uh, you know, remember, have his memories, but the person has passed away. It doesn't benefit that person. So there must be a day when perfect justice will be done and no injustice will be done to anybody. And that is that day of resurrection, day of judgment. And finally, the last among the beliefs is Qadr. Qadr is an Arabic term and the concept behind Qadr is that the test that we have been put, put into is preformed by God, is preformed and decreed. So the things that define the test are fixed, but how we behave in a situation is, upon, is left up to, up to us. So we have freedom of choice. So once again, the things that define the test are fixed from God, but how we behave in a situation is left to us. And because God is all-knowing, all-knowledgeable, He knows how we will perform. But that pre-knowledge of God will, does not affect our choice. That pre-knowledge of God does not affect our choice. So this was the faith element, the faith aspect. And now moving on to the actions. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that faith must, uh, the faith aspect must resonate through our actions, which are commandments of God. And the first commandment is that of prayer. Uh, Muslims pray five times a day. Yes, you heard me right. Five times a day. Uh, but these prayers are five to ten minutes long. So, maximum an hour if you look at it combined in a day. Uh, and these uh, prayers are distributed over the day. They serve as a constant reminder that we have a purpose so we don't get carried away by, uh, by our pursuit of this life and the material things of this life. Uh, the prayers can be pre uh, preferred to be performed in congregation uh, and they're spread over the day as I mentioned. The earliest being just before sunrise, noon, sunset, uh, afternoon, sunset, and then in the night. Uh, followed by fasting. Fasting, uh, you might have heard of something called Ramadan. Ramadan is the ninth month of the lunar calendar uh, where Muslims observe fast, where they basically abstain from food, drink, and intimate relations with their spouse for 30 days between the duration of the, uh, from dawn till dusk, basically. From just before sunrise to sunset. So the purpose behind fasting is righteousness. And this is not something new with Islam, but rather it was ordained to previous nations as well. And the purpose is, to bas basically the human body, the human being is a composure of two. There's the body and there's the spirit. So we often put in effort to, for nourishment of our body, but neglect nourishment and upliftment of our spirit. So by means of fasting, by curbing our bodily desire, by abstaining from food, drink, uh, and intimate relations during a certain period of time, uh, we and then engaging more in spiritual activities like worship of God and remembrance of God, we uplift our spiritual uh, nourishment, to say. Um, and then moving on to uh, pilgrimage. Uh, you might have heard of Mecca, anybody? Raise of hands, anybody knows where Mecca is? Okay, so Mecca is in Saudi Arabia. So for every Muslim who is financially, so he can afford the trip, he or she can afford the trip, and <coughs> physically able. So they can, because it's, uh, there are certain rituals to be performed, so if you're financially and physically able, then every Muslim must perform once in their lifetime pilgrimage to Mecca. And this is an annual gathering of over three million Muslims where they gather uh, in Mecca. Uh, they come from all walks of life, all professions. There's no differentiation between race. There are no hats of honor or pride. They all gather together and they transcend the societal differences that we tend to adhere by. And it's a practical demonstration of unity, brotherhood, and so on and so forth. Uh, finally, <coughs> charity. There's a financial obligation as well, where there's a certain Islam has set at a certain threshold. So whosoever is above that threshold they have to give 2.5% of their annual savings in charity. And these charity, uh, and this is distributed among the needy and poor of the society. And this is going to be it for my, for my part and the next presenter. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Arun I'd like to stand up um, and roam around. Uh, and uh, I'll be talking about the similarities between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all of which are also called um, monotheistic or Abrahamic religions. So Islam shares some beliefs with Christianity and Judaism. Muslims believe in the same one God that Jews and Christians believe in, the God of Abraham. Um, as Ihsan said, we use the word Allah to refer to God, 
which is the Arabic word for God, and Arab Christians also use the same word Allah to refer to God. Um, also, all three religions, um, they believe that this life is not the only life. So they have a concept of life after death and of heaven and hell. Um, similarly, they share the, uh, the belief uh, in human messengers or prophets and the books that God gave to some of the messengers for the guidance of the mankind. Um, among them are, so every Muslim believes and actually has to believe that uh, Moses was given um, Torah that Psalms was given to uh, David, and that Gospel was given to Jesus, may peace be upon them. However, they believe that these books were not preserved in their original language, and the final revelation, which is called Quran, um, is what has reached them in uh, preserved in its original language, and it was given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, so, Muslims share many common prophets with Jews and Christians. Um, some examples are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and Ezra, peace be upon them. Uh, Muslims believe that God sent messengers to every nation because he is the God of all people and he wants to guide them all. So he sent messengers to all people. We are just told about a few of them, and many of them are also considered prophets by Jews and Christians. For example, Abraham uh, in Islam is believed to be the father and ancestor of many prophets, including Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, who is the descendant of Abraham through his elder son Ishmael. Uh, and Abraham is, is a very prominent figure in Christianity and Judaism as well. And actually it is because of their belief in Abraham that these religions are called Abrahamic religions. And Muslims in particular re revere Abraham much. Uh, uh, one of their annual celebrations out of the two is um, dedicated to Abraham. Uh, it is called Eid al-Adha, and it is celebrated in the commemoration of Abraham's act of submission and obedience to God when he began slaughtering his son and uh, fulfilling the command of God. Uh, it was a great trial which he passed, and God saved his son and provided a sheep. You all might know this story. And so uh, Muslims, to this day, they have been commemorating this act every single year by slaughtering cattle and feeding the poor, the relatives, and the family members. <coughs> Similarly, um, Moses, he's a great prophet in Islam. He is believed to be given Torah and the uh, miracles of the staff and the leprous hand. And he's also believed to have saved his people by parting the sea. And many Muslims um, commemorate this escape. Uh, by fasting on the 10th day of the first month of lunar calendar. And uh, similarly, Muslims share many beliefs with Christians about Jesus and his uh, mother Mary. Mary is given a very high status in Islam. She is presented in the Quran as one of the role models for the all believers, men and women. Um, she is considered as a very righteous, chaste, obedient, and faithful lady. Actually, there's an entire chapter in the Quran which is named after her. Similarly, Muslims believe in the virgin birth of Jesus, that he was born of Virgin Mary. Uh, they believe that he is the word of God, that he is the promised Christ, that he preached the divine book gospel, that he was supported by the Holy Spirit, that he performed many miracles, inclu including healing born blinds and lepers, and raising from the dead, that he was raised to the heaven, and that he will be sent again near the end time. So these concepts may, might uh, sound similar to, uh, to the Christians, and actually these terms are familiar, but, uh, similar, but of course there are some differences in the details. For example, um, the Holy Spirit is the title of Angel Gabriel in Islam. So Muslims believe that Jesus was supported by Angel Gabriel. Similarly, the, uh, similarly they believe that he was uh, the promised Christ, but Christ only means the anointed one. And, uh, and he's believed to be the word of God because uh, he had an unnatural birth without father. And he was created as a command, as a result of the command or word of God, which is be. And he became. Um, that's why he's called word of God. And Adam before him was also created like that, without father, without mother, by the command of God. Among the other differences uh, about Jesus are that Muslims believe that he is a human being but of course one of the best human beings that ever lived. That he's actually a prophet, and one of the greatest prophets. Uh, they also believe that he's not God, or son of God, who died for the sins of mankind. Uh, Muslims believe that sin is a disobedience of God. So 
uh, God forgives all sins. He does not have to die in order to forgive the sins. He just forgives sins. All what he may require from us is that we um, ask for sincere repentance. Um, among other differences with Christianity are that there is no concept of trinity in Islam. Um, also, there is no concept of original sin or the inheritance of sin. Muslims believe that all human beings are responsible only for their own actions and not for the actions of anybody else. Similarly, blood is not required to blot out sins. God forgives them. And faith alone is not enough. Both faith and good deeds are required. So, like uh, beliefs, Muslims also share many teachings and practices with uh, Judaism and Christianity because, again, they have common roots and common messengers. So, in terms of worship, all these three religions, they have a concept of uh, like prayer and fasting, although there are differences in how they are performed. And also, all three have teachings about charity, about modesty, about kind treatment of poor, the neighbors, and so on. And interestingly, uh, some of the legal punishments of Islam, uh, for which Islam is uh, targeted and demonized these days, uh, for example, the punishment of apostasy or the punishment of married adulterers, they are not in the Quran. They, are, uh, they were actually Jewish practices and were adopted from the Bible. Um, similarly, Muslims also share some dietary prohibitions with Jews. Uh, for example, pork is forbidden in both religions. And Muslims in the U.S. are very thankful of Jews uh, because, uh, because of the kosher products that they can always uh, eat without worrying. Um, similarly, um, Quran mentions Jews and Christians several times in the Quran, and it refers to them as people of the scripture or people of the reminder. There is a this is a title of them because, again, Muslims believe that they uh, had common uh, prophets who were given through books. And, um, also, um, there are some verses in the Quran which speak very good of some uh, Jews and Christians that I would like to share with you. First verse says, uh, it asks Muslims uh, to not argue with Jews and Christians about religion. And if they have to, they are asked to do it in a way which is uh, respectful and nice. It says, and argue not with the people of the scripture, except in a way which is better, respectful and nice, except with those who do wrong. And then say to them, we believe in what has been revealed to us and revealed to you. Our God and your God is one, and to him we have submitted. The other verse um, speaks uh, about the virtues of some good people among the people of the scripture. It says, a party of the people of the scripture stand for the right. They recite the verses of Allah during the hours of night, prostrating themselves in prayer. They believe in Allah and the last day and they enjoin good upon people and forbid them from evil, and they hasten in good works, and they are among the righteous. And whatever good they do, nothing will be rejected of them, for Allah knows well who are righteous. The next two are about Christians, specifically. This one says that they have compassion and mercy. It says, and after them we sent messengers, and we sent Jesus, son of Mary, and gave him gospel, and we ordained in the hearts of those who followed him, compassion and mercy. And the final verse is that you will find the nearest in love to the believers, to the Muslims, those who say we are Christians, because among them are monks and priests, and they are not proud. Um, so in the end, I would like to say that despite the fact that there is so much common in all religions, in these three religions, uh, yet there is so much lack of tolerance, respect, and understanding. But I think it is time that we find our common roots and we realize that the things that are common among us are much more than our differences and we start working towards tolerance, coexistence, understanding, mutual respect and friendship.